Hey everyone, welcome back to Real World View 3 Function Refs. And in this series, we're taking a look at function ref composables in Vue, and more specifically, how function refs can be used to solve problems that you'll actually come across in your day to day work as an engineer. So, um, in this video, we're going to talk more broadly about directives and compare them and contrast them with function rep composables and just take a look and, and get a feel for what it what it's like to replace a directive in your app with a function rep composable and how and why you would do that. So as an example, we're going to be looking at this. We're going to be looking using this library called AutoAnimate, which is from the people over at FormKit. So the purpose of AutoAnimate is to make list transitions a little bit nicer. And they have, if I can find here yeah they export a view directive that uh, makes it really nice so you basically just use this v auto animate directive you put it on the root element of whatever list you're rendering and then the list transitions happen nicely so let's switch over to a demo here so we can look at the problem space a little bit more closely so in this demo i am rendering a list of items with v4 and I have nothing right now on the root element. So you can see when I click these buttons to add items or remove items or sort items, everything just snaps into place. The layout doesn't animate nicely or the transitions aren't nice. And this is not, you know, it's not terrible, but it's not an ideal user experience. It'd be not much nicer if this stuff was transitioning and animating in a way that made more visual sense. So what we can do is add the V auto animate directive, and I'll show you in a sec where we're importing that from and how that's working. Um, we add V auto animate to our UL, the root element of our list that we're rendering. And now, uh, I think if I reload here, yeah, so now we are getting uh, nice transitions when I add or remove items. When we sort items, they're swapping places with an animated transition, which is all super nice. So um, much better user experience compared to just things snapping into place. Also, what you can do with V Auto Animate is you can pass in options. Um, so you do V Auto Animate equals, and then you can pass in options, like duration is one of them. So if I do uh, duration, let's just do like a full second to make that exaggerated. Um, yeah, you can see now the transition is much slower. So a few more options. It's some nice configuration, um, but the default is, is usually good for, for most apps. So what we have in this demo, I actually, instead of importing V auto animate from the library, which is at form kit slash auto animate. And I think if you're doing view stuff, you would do at form kit slash auto animate slash view. Um, we, I've rewritten it in, in the demo here so we can take a closer look. It's super straightforward, uh, and this is basically exactly what FormKit does internally uh, when they export this thing. So we have in our vAutoAnimate file here, export const vAutoAnimate, and then the directive just configures a mounted hook. In the mounted hook, we're receiving, we can get access to the DOM element that the directive is on, and then we can also get access to any options that are passed through uh, the way we did before. So on the mounted hook, all we do is pass the DOM element to the auto animate function, which we're importing from at form kit slash auto animate. This is just a plain JavaScript function. This is not view specific. Uh, and then also we're passing in the options or an empty object into the auto animate function. So super straightforward, really nice user experience uh, and really nice developer experience for us when we're building this. Um, I'm going to make some space here because we're going to need that in just a sec. So what I want to look at now is how we can replace that, rebuild this vAuto animate with a function ref composable. Then we'll talk a little bit about why you would want to do that. So I have a file already set up here called use auto animate. Uh, but before we start writing, let's actually go to our template and see what we want this to look like. So as a developer experience, I would want this to be like import use auto animate from our file or you know if this were a third party dependency we would do it from there and then i'll do const api equals use auto animate so this use auto animate function is going to just return an element api actually let's get the now let's do the element api so if you've seen the intro video to this series i talked about um, this function use element api which is my abstraction around creating function refs and working with them. 
So definitely check that out if you haven't seen that. Um, but what we would get here, this API variable, this is basically going to be the return value of use element API, and it's going to include a function ref in there. So we're going to, instead of putting v auto animate, instead of putting that directive on our on our um, our ul element, we're going to bind to the ref attribute the function ref that we're getting from uh, the element API. So API dot ref gets bound there. And then, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's what I would like it to feel like. Um, so still very straightforward, basically no, um, almost no extra overhead. Uh, we'll talk about the advantages of doing this in just a sec, but first let's actually write the use auto animate function and make sure that is working because of course right now it's uh, not working and yeah, it should actually be throwing errors in the console because none of this stuff exists. So if we, sw if we head over to the use auto animate file, we can do export function, use auto animate, and in this function, we're going to accept options and those options are gonna have the same type as the options that get passed into the directive. So instead of doing what the directive does where you have to kind of go through this little bit weird view syntax to get access to the options, we're just gonna ex we're just gonna accept these as a plain parameter. Um, should probably import all this stuff as well, all the form kit stuff. So we're gonna import the types and the auto animate function. And then internally, <clears throat> If we look at the v auto animate function, it's using a mounted hook. So in a composable, of course, we would use on mounted. And we'll make sure we're importing that from view. Import on mounted from view. Uh, in this function, we would want to do the same thing that v auto animate is doing. So we would call auto animate and we'd pass in the L. Instead of the options here, we're going to. Uh, instead of the binding value, we're going to do the options. Actually, in the function signature, we'll initialize the options to an empty object. And um, so now the question is, where do we get this element from? And the way we can do that is by setting up our element API. So we'll do const API equals use element API. We'll get that imported from at Balayata slash view features. And we'll just call that with no arguments because this is just a single element API. We could also specify kind element, um, but that's not necessary. This is the default value. So we have the API and now in auto animate, we can pass in API.element.value. So the only um, difference here compared to the directive where it's typed as an HTML element, this, uh, this function ref, this template ref can possibly have a value of null. So what we would want to do here is just make sure that it's not null before passing it into auto animate. So we can do if api.element.value uh, instance of HTML element, then we call auto animate. <clears throat> and that should give us, yeah, so that's a fully type safe function. And actually, oh, we just have to return the API and then it should all be working. So if I reload here, that's, uh, yeah. So we're in our template. We've got the ref bound to the root element. We're importing our function and calling it. And so now, yeah, it is indeed working. So we can sort things, we can add or remove items, and they all get animated nicely. So pretty lightweight um, for this particular example, where the original code really just registers a mounted hook, and that's pretty much the only thing you need to do. The only additional stuff we do in the function is setting up the function ref and returning that and then using it slightly differently in our template. So for an example like this, right, where the, the code is so small and actually use auto animate is more code than the directive. Why would we want to go for a function ref composable over a directive? And I think for the most part, the answer is you really can go with either one. It's, it's basically no impact on the, the DX, um, the developer experience is basically the same, super lightweight, just adding one attribute. It's just, you know, do you want to add V auto animate to the, the root element or do you want to bind a function ref? It's essentially the same um, number of lines of code for the developer experience. The one thing I think that sets the composable apart and in stack blitz, um, unfortunately we can't see this as well as we would if we were in VS code or something, but if we were using V auto animate, um, this directive here. Uh, our, 
our options here that we're passing to V Auto Animate, these wouldn't really type check properly. Uh, we could do something like duration and then set it to a string, and this wouldn't this wouldn't cause type errors. Uh, directives just don't they don't type check their their options as well as you might want them to. Certainly not compared to the way a um, a composable would type check this. So in our script setup here, if we're passing options to use auto animate and we're passing that duration option, this would get much better TypeScript support. Also, we'd be able to use this composable inside of other composables uh, without having access to the root element. So I suppose, you know, that's, that's kind of two, two good reasons to use function ref composables instead of directives, depending on your use case, right? If it's just the use case where you have direct access to the element already in your template, then it's basically the same experience. You could use a directive and you'd be fine. If you want slightly better TypeScript support, or really if you want to use this use auto animate composable inside of another composable that has access to an element, maybe you're setting up some sort of fancy list and it has other features included in it and you want auto animate to be one of those features, then the composable would be better because you can move this inside of any other composable. Whereas with the directive, you have to have access to the template and you have to be able to put that on the element. So the composable, um, a, a few more lines of code for a simple example like this. For a longer directive, probably we'd be much closer to the to the number of lines of code. Sometimes composables can even be a little bit less compared to directives. Uh, we get better type checking and we can have more flexibility in how we actually use this, whether it's in script setup or it's in a different composable. So yeah, that's kind of um, just a short little episode here to compare directives and function ref composables. Uh, get our feet wet with starting to rewrite this stuff and talking about the how and why. So definitely we'll be coming out with more episodes soon. Some of them are going to go a little bit more complex than this and uh, should they will do so in a way that's going to be, I think, fun and interesting. So definitely look forward to that and I'll see you in the next